Chapter number 12 is uh, Sales and Sales Returns Daybooks. It's an important chapter. Actually, there are two topics, purchases and purchases, returns, daybook, and then sale and sale return daybook. So sales, we understand. I mean, we all know what is sales, okay? Now, what we need to understand, what are sales returns daybooks and uh, how do we do accounting for them? In short, you should remember that sales return daybook. So this is one thing, sale return daybook. Or uh, let's call it like this. There are two words. We call it sales daybook. And then we have sales return daybook, okay? Sales return daybook. They always, sale, sale daybook will always only include credit sales, okay? So this is the first thing you should remember. And with this concept, we will continue. So we have sales. And sales can be made in two forms. Either you can sell goods on cash or you can sell goods on credit. So when you sell goods on cash, those are recorded in the cash book. And when you sell goods on credit, then those are recorded in the sales day book. So what we learned that sales day book will include only credit sales. It will not include cash sales. Okay, number one. And sales return day book will include the goods which the customers have returned us back. Because it is possible that sometime for some reason, customers, they bring back the goods. So when they bring back the goods, we put them in a separate book. We put them into a separate account, which is called sales return day book. Okay. So now we start with the chapter. What is sales day book? I, in very brief, okay, we are going to discuss in detail, but in a very brief note, you understand that sales day book is a book in which you record, or it's an account in which you record credit sales only. Cash sales are not included here. Cash sales will be written in the cash book. What is sales return day book? It will include those goods which customers have returned us. Entering sales transactions in the daybook. This is important thing and we will, we need to spend some time on this concept, how to record the transactions. Coding the data, that is relatively easy. Posting the daybook totals, that is very important. Uh, so the need for the sales daybook. Why do we need it? Okay. So we know that sales daybook, it will include the credit sales. Why do we keep it separately? You might be thinking that I should be writing my sales in one place. Why do I separate them? Uh, I mean, sales are sales. We can write them in one book. Why do we put them separately? Yes, this is very important to put them separately because cash sales are not a problem because a customer comes in and he asks how much is this calculator for and I say $10. He gives me $10. He takes calculator and goes away and that the, the transaction is, is, is done. I don't need to follow up. I don't need to chase. It's gone. But imagine a customer comes in and says, how much is this calculator for? And I say $10 and he says, if I take calculator today, can I pay you in 15 days time? No, that's a credit sales. So if I agree with this customer that, okay, no problem. You take the calculator today and you pay me after 15 days. Now, this is a transaction which I need to record very carefully. I need to take extra care about this transaction because this is my receivable. This is my money I have to receive from this customer. So I put it separately and I call it a sales day book. I put it in the sales day book separately so that I can, I can monitor my receivables. I can follow up on my receivables. If the customer does not bring the money in 15 days, maybe I will send him an email. Maybe I will give him a call. So I need to monitor and manage my receivables. Okay. So this is one main reason for putting these credit sales separately so that they do not get mixed up with the cash sales because cash sales are done. But for this transaction, it is not done. I have sold the goods, 
but the transaction is not completed because I have given the goods, but the customer has not given the cash. So still we need to follow up this transaction. Number one reason. So this is actually the main reason. Why do we put them separately? The need for the sales day book. The sales day book lists the invoices raised by business when it supplies goods or services on credit. A business will obviously want to make sure that it receives the money due for all the sales which it makes on credit to raise invoices for all the goods and services which it sells on credit. This is also important, raising invoices. You know what? How do you know that you have to receive money from the customer? If the customer comes in and says, give me the calculator and I will pay you after 15 days, it's not that I will keep it in my mind and I will just remember it. You know, I have to create a document for that so that when I see the document, I say, oh, I have to receive the money. And that document is the invoice. So invoicing is very important. And invoicing with the right amount in the name of the right customer so that you should not be asking, you know, the goods are sold to X, but you're asking money from Y. So who is the customer? Which is the product? When the goods were sold, what goods were sold? What was the amount? Everything will be covered through invoicing. And sometimes it is possible that goods are, you know, uh, delivered because invoicing is not done by the salespeople. Invoicing is done by the accounting department. So we need to have a coordination because a salesman standing and salesman is delivering the goods or showing the goods or giving the goods, but he does not raise the invoice. Invoicing is done by the accounting department. So that coordination is also important. And that co coordination means that we need to issue invoices to the right customers. Um, Sometimes invoices are raised not at the same time. Sometimes invoices are raised probably after some period of time. So you need to be careful about that. I'll give you one example. Uh, you know, you have got this, uh, for example, there is a company which delivers water in your office, okay? So every week they bring three or four of those big cans, those 19 liters, big water bottles, you know, and they bring it three bottles, four bottles every week. This is your office requirement. You don't pay them every week. What is What usually happens here, that whenever he brings and he leaves four bottles, then they give you one delivery note that I have put four bottles, price is not written there, just four bottles, and you put signature. And they take this uh, delivery note to the accounting department, and accounting department compiles it, and end of the month, they see that which customer or which office we have delivered how many bottles of water. And then they raise invoice. So here, invoice will be raised after 30 days. Invoice is not raised on daily basis. So you need to keep a track of that. So that's why I put, you know, issue invoices, because sometimes invoices are not issued at the same time. I give you another example, a very common example. These courier companies, all offices, they have contracts with some courier company, Alpha Courier Company, Beta Courier Company, whatever. What the courier company does and how does it work in real life? You know, I have some letters to be delivered. There are three letters today. I give these three letters to the reception. And I say to my receptionist that, and usually it is done by the reception, by the way, in many offices, that because different departments have letters going out. Sometimes there are two letters going out. Sometimes there are 20 letters going out. So you leave it to the reception that these have to be delivered. And addresses are written already there. So reception will call to the courier office that we have five letters to be delivered. Please send someone to pick them up. So you have a contract with that courier company. That courier company will send one person. He will come in and he will see the letters. He will pick up the letters and he will just give you one document that I have received these five letters. That's all. He is not able or he, he is not legally 
uh, capable of creating an invoice. He does not have a stamp. He does not have official invoicing. He is not carrying invoices. He does not even know the prices because letters are going to different destinations. Some letters are for short distance. Some letters are for long distance. Some letters are within the same city. Some letters are out of the city. So he just collect the letters. And he makes one document of receiving the letters, one copy given to the reception, one copy he gives to his own accounting department. And we don't pay every day $2 or $3 or $4 to the courier company. It does not happen. It does not happen that every day somebody comes in to collect letter and we give him, okay, today it is $3, tomorrow it is $5. It will not happen like this. So throughout the month, Every day they will come in and they will collect two letters, five letters, ten letters. Take them away. Within the accounting department, end of the month, the courier company, the Alpha Courier Company, has a customer called Ali. And they know that Ali has called us, you know, Ali called us 20 times during the month. And he sent 114 letters to different places. They will make an account. And end of the month, they will create the invoice and they will send me one invoice that you have to pay us $150 for the month of September 2022, whatever it is. So you need to keep a separate record for this thing. So issue invoices to the right customers. So it should not happen that I'm Ali and I sent, you know, I, I, I sent 100 and. 14 letters for which they should I should be paying $150, but they give me a bill for another customer, which is $1,000. I will go crazy, okay? That I did not send so many letters. Why are you asking me for $1,000? Oh, sorry, I'm very, we are very sorry. We sent you the bill of another customer. That will create confusion. So you need to make sure that you make invoices to the right customers for the right amounts. And keep track of the invoices. Once these invoices are issued, end of the month, then Alpha Company will keep a track because they, when they send me the invoice after one month, they said, you have to pay us within 15 days. And now they are waiting for the money. And then invoices and credit notes. Credit notes are opposite. Credit notes are exactly opposite to invoice because in case of invoice, you claim money from the customer, okay? Invoice creates receivable. Invoice creates receivable. When you issue invoice to a customer, you create a receivable, which means you have to receive money from the customer. Credit note is opposite of that. Credit note will decrease the receivable because for some reason, Maybe I issued some, I, I sold 10 calculators, okay? One calculator is for, say, one calculator is for $10. And I sold 10 calculators to a customer. I raised an invoice for $100. So this is my invoice amount, which is $100. So I have $100 receivable from my customer X for selling 10 calculators. One week later, the customer comes in and he says that, you know, this one calculator is not working well. I, I mean, this is not working fine. I want to return it. I say, okay, I checked it. I say, yeah, it has some problem. I can see it. So no worries. I can change. I can change it. Please take another one. He says, no, I don't need it. Actually, nine, I, I got nine that are enough. This one is in any case, it is, ex it is extra. So just, I want to return it. I don't want to change it. So now this customer actually has got nine calculators with $10. So he should be paying me $90, right? That makes sense. In my books, I already have recorded 100. And when I sold him 10, I made an invoice. I gave him a copy. I put a copy for myself. I recorded 100 receivable from the customer and the customer recorded 100 payable to Ali. This is what the original transaction was. But then what happened? That one calculator was returned back. Now, this I cannot do something. In accounting, you cannot make like this, okay, let's make it like 90. It, it will not happen. It was already recorded 100. It had an invoice of 100. It had a document of 100. You can't just 
you know, clear the amount or make a cut like this. You know, it's not possible. This was $100 there. Now, what we need to do, we need to create a minus $10 thing so that the net balance would be 100 minus 1090. And this minus 10 means that I need to receive, I need to decrease my receivable. And to decrease my receivable, there should be a document. When we recorded 100, there was a document and that document is called invoice. Now, if I want to make minus 10, there should again be a document and that document will be called credit note. That document will be called credit note to decrease the receivable. So remember, you do have credit notes and you have debit notes. The purpose of credit notes and debit notes is to adjust the amount between customers and suppliers when you need to adjust the amount for some reason. Maybe customer returns some goods. Maybe we miscalculated the invoice. Maybe we made an error in the invoice. You know, we made some error in the invoice because customer agreed with us. Okay, this is 100. Will you give me some discount? I say, okay, I'll give you $5 discount. It should be 95. We agreed on 95. But then by mistake, I made an invoice for 100. He took the invoice. He went there and he recorded 100. One week later, he will call me, Mr. Ali, you gave me an invoice for 100. Remember, we agreed on 95. You gave me a discount. I said, yeah, I remember. I'm sorry, that was my mistake. I made invoice for 100. So what do we do now? Can we cancel it out? It's not good because it has already been issued. It has already been recorded. What we do, we, we I said, okay, no problem. I will issue you a $5 credit note. So debit notes and credit notes will be used to adjust, increase, decrease, decrease especially the balances between you and your customers or the balances between you and your suppliers. So we need to keep track of our invoices as well as our credit notes. Okay, so this is introduction to sales daybook. In other words, the business will need records which show the following details, when and how much money is due to the business, when and how much money. And this will only be done if you have kept your sales day book in place, okay? Cash sales are not an issue because I've got the cash. This is I need to see how many of my customers are going to pay me in September, how many of my customers are going to pay me in the month of October, and how many customers are going to pay me in the month of December? Because I give credit, different credit terms to different customers. With some customers, I agree 15 days credit. With some other old, regular, big customers, I agree with 30 days. Maybe there are some special customers whom I'm giving a credit of 90 days. I don't know. Mostly it is 30 days. But sometimes we also give 60 days credit. So you need to see that when and how much money is due to the business, total sales made over a certain period, how many credit sales we have made in a month, okay? So we actually, this is very important. I want to see that in the month of September 22, how, how much sales I made in cash and how much sales I made in credit. When you make a credit sales, you know what does it mean? It means that you have given away the goods, which of course has value, and you have not received the money. So money is yet to be received. So you need to see that how many credit sales are you making. The business will therefore need to have some way of recording and summarizing the contents of the invoices and credit sales, which are called source documents. So source document is the document from where you record the actual transaction. So invoice is a source document. Uh, credit note is a source document. Source document is that document by seeing which we update our records, okay? And this is one example of a sales day book. How does it look like? It looks like this. You see here, it is 10th of January, 2017, for example. Invoice number 2024748495051529. Customers S. Jones, uh, net total $172. It includes 34.40 of sales tax and gross is 206. 
So actually, the total amount from customer is 206, out of which 172 belongs to us. And this is a sales tax. This will go to the government. Okay, This is not our money. But we will receive it from the customer and we will pay it to the government. AB supplies, 84.50 is the net total, 16.90 is sales tax, total gross is 101. So my receivables are this one actually from customer, the receivable is 206. But this is my money, this is the government money. By the way, if you want to see the double entry of this thing, how do we record this amount? We should say debit receivable, 206 dollar, credit my sales, which are $172, and credit is sales tax, which is $34. I just ignored these cents, okay? So this is receivable, this is my asset. Increase in asset is debit. You know that increase in asset is debit. This is my income. And increase in income is credit. So I'm crediting it. And this is my liability. Increase in liability is also credit because I have to receive from the customer. And this amount, I have to give it to the government, the tax department. So this is my liability. Okay. So this is the exact double entry, exact double entry for this particular transaction. If you ever wish to see that how this transaction will be recorded in the books of accounts. It would be recorded like this, debit receivable with total amount because my total amount which I have to receive from customer is 206. This is my receivable. And receivable is an asset, so I make it a debit. Then net total, this is my income. 172 is my income and increase in income is credit. And I put it into sales. So in sales, I will always show 172. In sales, you don't show 206. And then 34.60 is sales tax. It's a liability. It is called actually output tax. This is output tax. Output tax is the tax which you receive on your sales. Okay. So this is output tax and output tax is a liability. Increase in liability is credit. And then similarly, you need to make transactions, double entries for all of the remaining ones. So after seeing this thing, what do I understand that on 10th of January, the total receivables are 1281, which means that this is what we have to receive from customers by selling goods on credit on 10th of January. And as a result of this thing, my liability has increased by 213, which I have to settle to the tax department. And 1068 will go into my sales amount, into my sales account. Okay. So this is how your a very typical sales day book looks like. It does not include cash sales. Cash sales are not here. Remember, if I say, if I say that this is, uh, you know, an example of uh, sales day book, it means that I'm only and only talking about credit sales. And this is how your credit notes look like. So we said that two things are there, invoices and credit notes. So uh, invoices and sales day book, sales day book I have shown you. This is your credit note, uh, you know, your sales, uh, how to say, uh, credit uh, sales return day book. This is your sales return day book. On the same day, on 10th of January, some customer, Petty Form, he brought in some goods back and actually we these goods were returned so we issued a credit note when we you know when i sold you goods i gave you invoice i sold you 10 calculators i said take the calculators sign this piece of paper you have to give me money now when you bring back one calculator i cannot say okay give me calculator thank you very much you also need some document for this transaction because when 10 calculators were given, there was one document. Now one calculator is coming back, there should be a document. And that document is credit note. And credit note number C2214, whatever we give it. Total amount 2940. Inside of that sales tax 5.88, gross is 3528. The net result will be, the net result will be 
on 10th of January. Remember you had this uh, sales figure, 1068. From 1068, end of the day, 29.40 will be adjusted, will be reduced. Sales minus sales returns is called net sales. From sales tax liability 213, this liability 5.88 will be subtracted and your net sales tax liability would be 213 minus 5, maybe $208. Okay, so this is on one side, I'm selling goods on putting them on sales day book. On the other side, some customers bring back goods and I record them. Uh, previously, I was putting here invoice number. If you pay attention, I, I wrote here invoice number when I'm selling goods. Now, when I'm getting back the goods from customers, I'm calling it credit note number. Rest of the things are the same. Rest of the things are same. So when I say that it is a credit note, it means that this will be subtracted from my net sales. This will be subtracted from my sales tax. This will be subtracted from my gross sales on this date, 10th of January. Okay. So this is uh, sales day book and your uh, sales return.